guys and girls, and welcome to episode 133 of the F Reality Podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and on Twitch. And don't forget, you can catch the show live uh, in VR using big screen TV. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, put them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Now, of course, it's time for me to introduce you to the team. First up, this guy loves nothing more than a pleasant hike in the great outdoors, and that's in and out of VR. It's our resident VR streamer, Zimtok5. How you doing, dude? Peace, yo. <laughs> Head crab, Mike. <laughs> it was slipping. It you was held slipping. on there for, for dear life for a while. You did. It's, it's, it pretty much sucks at being a head crab if it can't even like stuck to your hack, right? Yeah. It's because I've got no hair. That's why. <laughs> and to be fair, Nathy's one looks photoshopped on. So for the, for the audio <laughs> listeners, we've got a 50% coverage of heads in head crabs this, uh, this week. Uh, yeah, uh, I wasn't here last week, but uh, thanks for the break, guys. Um, it was the weirdest and quite a nice experience uh, to sit down on the couch with my wife and be like, we looked at each other, we're like, it's been two years since we had a Saturday to ourselves. Like, it, it, I literally have not had that uh, window for a while, and I've been absolutely killing it at work, like, uh, three weeks of just hell. So um, thank you for... Uh, the, the the day off and um nathy for doing a fantastic job in the seat uh, i was really surprised my wife was like waiting there she literally did the whole like rub the hands together she's like oh i can't wait to watch this fall down and i was like i don't know he did he did a good job it sounds like it started on time it was yeah. running great i watched the show back this morning i didn't get a chance during the week um and it, it was it was a fantastic show so uh, i think that's one of the nicest things about this is like even when the four-legged beast has a leg cut off how well it's run and we've done it with like all the different legs cut off and it just runs <laughs> well so this is a great po podcast you know yeah and that's the thing like people don't realize we we've never missed an episode so far we've never actually missed a, a podcast and we've been doing this for like over two years now that is like some serious dedication and like you say when when you're not on the show like you know when i picked up the puppy recently you're sitting there on a saturday uh, evening you're like what am I doing with my life? Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I should be on a, a show right now. It's a very strange sensation. It is. It is. It but is. I love it's it. Like a, it's, it's like that uh, missing limb feeling, you know? So, yeah, not, absolutely. Not been with your VR buds. So, yeah. Absolutely. But glad to have you back on the show, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so next up, this guy has got social distancing locked down. This is just a normal week for him. And I can say that as I'm exactly the same myself. It's my brother from another mother. It's, of course, Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing all right. And yes, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, this is a normal normal week for us. We don't leave the house. We don't yeah. get sunlight. It's true, Welcome yeah. to uh, full time YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like like we have a pandemic going on all the time, basically, and that's yeah. what it comes down to. But it means <laughs> like when the fun. when the whole world is on lockdown and everyone's struggling, we're like, well, this is normal for us <laughs> to yeah. a certain degree. Although I, although it is weird to be one of the let's say rare species out there right now who has still a relevant job mm, yeah so yeah. yeah we can still um make content make money hopefully it, do, it does help affect you you mean yeah well to to a certain degree of course yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but you're good otherwise yeah yeah i'm good i of course i miss the traveling you know i, I love to do that yeah of um, course. Th that was kind of my goal this year to you know go to more places just just do whatever i want to do if i see something cool in terms of games or hardware i just go there and try it um but uh it seems like 2020 is kind of on a well um oh. i don't know on a roll uh, by itself, basically, uh, without me uh, really riding it. <laughs> but um, yeah, besides that, you know, being at home, it's 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 okay. But I I do miss it. Yeah, I do. That's understandable. That's understandable. Uh, so next up, Belgium doesn't even want to let go of this guy. Uh, they just can't cope without him. It's the one and only Rowdy VR. How are you doing, dude? Maybe you can tell us a bit about your your tale of woe. Yeah, I, I, apparently I'm I'm too rowdy to leave. Even like uh, the <laughs> the entire situation uh, that went down for me really shortly abbreviated is just that everything's been cancelled uh, up until this point uh, in, in the foreseeable future, at least. Uh, like Belgium is currently in in lockdown, meaning nobody gets in or out of the country at the moment. Uh, 
it's been it's been a very rough week uh, just to get everything arranged, uh, especially because as you all can see, I'm not in my own apartment anymore. Uh, since that has, all, all the furniture has been moved, everything there has been moved as well. But my trip to Canada, I had to cancel as well uh, because of the flight. Uh, it's not going out anymore. Luckily, I didn't find an apartment there yet, so I haven't. I didn't have to cancel that. I did have to cancel all the hotels and the bookings uh, and a lot of arrangements and appointments um, in the coming uh weeks and months uh, but as of now I, I don't really know yet what is going on we, we're just awaiting further news i'm not too worried uh, my parents have done a great job in like uh, giving me a place to sleep and eat uh, so that that's been great but for the rest it's been it's been a bit hectic just to get everything arranged uh, i still managed to get my my basic setup uh, set up so i can still uh, I can still do the podcast and I can still uh, record some VR and hopefully play some VR. That's the only positive thing about this. Since I'm not leaving next week, I might actually be able to play some uh, some of the games that be coming out next week. It was, nice. writ- it was written in the in the in the stars for you, Rowdy. Yeah, th- yeah. thank thank you, thank you. For <laughs> someone someone in the chat says Rowdy's in a sauna. <laughs> He's yeah, sweating, or sweating the virus right now. Johnny Wells virus says, or, or let me let me blow your mind if, if you're watching the video uh, version of this podcast. Just just think for a second that uh, the background is his floor. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually just laying down like you're you're on like weird. a bungee suspension system. Is <laughs> that, that's weird? This is bending my mind when I think about it like that. I know. Thank you for that, Nathy. Um, but last, but my name is Lee, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. Uh, we've got an epic show for you today. Some of the highlights include we discuss what came out of the Oculus Game Developer Showcase this week. Uh, the PS5 and Xbox One Series X specs were revealed, so we talk about them and how they sort of relate to VR. Zim's going to give you the lowdown on loads of... And loads of releases to look forward to next week. This is rare, so enjoy the releases while they last. <laughs> and finally, our main topics this week are Gabe Newell. Gabe Newell uh, recently talked about his ideas for the future of VR uh, using brain interfaces, which is fascinating. And we're going to be talking about that. And then also our predictions for the leaked upcoming Oculus headset codenamed Del Mar. So uh, juicy, juicy podcast this week, uh, especially with everything going on next week. So uh, this is going to be a good one, I think. Something um, going on next week? I'm, I'm kind of out of the loop, so I have no idea. <laughs> we'll fill you in. We'll fill you in. Uh, but first up, let's find out what everyone's been up to this week and the highlight of the week this week. And maybe we can start it off with Rowdy first. Like, have you have you been able to play any VR content no, I, this week? I, I haven't played a, a single VR game uh, this week, uh, mainly because I had to break down my entire headset uh, or my entire PC and like get everything in parts uh, shipped to my parents' place now. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been uh, I haven't been able to play any any VR games, and I actually haven't played a regular game save for Ori uh, and the Blind. Oh, no, I did. I did play. Um, uh, how is it called? Limbo. Do you guys know? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, I did play that one. Very dark, though. But there's uh, a sequel to that that's really worth oh, doing as well. Okay. There's a re- like not a spiritual sequel by the same people, and I think it's done almost better. So uh, inside. Inside, yeah. yeah inside. I, have, I, I, I am good. planning on starting that one uh, soon as well, just to, to kill the time a little bit. Uh, but yeah, um, I just managed to get my VR set up back uh, up and running. So uh, hopefully, well, I mean, I haven't really tested if it works yet, but my laptop says like on the side here, VR ready. So I, I, ah. <laughs> I hope that is the case. <laughs> nice. That's an well, RTX 2060, so it should be fine, yeah. right? should be fine. Should yeah. be fine, yeah. Um, but good, good to hear that you're, you know, getting back into the swing of things. You got it set up. You know, you're going to be ready for Monday. Um, yeah. So, what about you then, uh, Zim? What have you been up to uh, this week? What was your highlight? So, uh, seeing as I was out for two weeks, I've I've got a little bit more. Well, the, the main thing I did, uh, which you guys know, I've I've complained about hard drive space for the longest time, was I rearranged about eight terabytes of data, and I've got like 1.2 terabytes free on two SSDs now all warmed up and ready for Alex. Um, and uh, I did a lot of restructuring, rebuilt two machines, been a busy boy. So um, thankfully for that. In that rebuild, and for those who were wondering, why do I see a mouse cursor every so often? Um, that's part of the rebuild, and a, a mystery, an unknown mystery that we have yet to solve. Um, the other thing that I played, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face, uh, was Horizons. I can't. I can't keep a straight face uh, for that because Mike is probably thinking, shit, NDA, Facebook. No, 
I'm talking about Animal Crossing. <laughs> New Horizons. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, I, I've, been, I've been seeing this pop up a lot on like Twitter and like chats, but I'm completely out of the loop on that one. What is oh, it about? I like, am as well. Why, why is I, everyone so hyped about it? Because if I if I look at like the cover of it, it yeah. looks like some kids game or something. Have you ever played Animal Crossing before? It, no, it, I never even heard of it. So I don't know what it is? It, okay. Animal Crossing is is quite an old game. Like my wife played it a lot when she was uh, when she was a kid, and she's big into it. And I didn't know much about it. If you think about it this way, it's like a if you took The Sims, but you were stuck on a, a planet that's like a a ball, right? And you, you start off on a desert island, and then you build a community. Uh, this is a 2D game. It's not a VR game, but um, worth mentioning. Because as you said, Rowdy, there's like a lot of attention for it. And we got yeah. sucked into it. We almost never buy full-priced Switch games. Um, but the facet of the game that's really interesting that I find is uh, the resources in the game uh, only respawn every real-life day. So if you go and you harvest some cherries from a cherry tree or you even pick up the weeds and you go sell them because there's fucking shopkeepers who will buy weeds. <laughs> yeah, Nate has a lot of experience with that as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look, at Look, at my, <laughs> Look at my face. That's all you need to know. This is great. <laughs> Selling uh, it. I'm, I'm, I'm eating it. I'm smoking it. Everything. That's it. This, this is reminding me of the Elon Musk podcast now. Yeah. With Rogan. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the whole, that's like the whole concept. And you basically just, you start off with a tent and you build an area and you, it's, it's, it's got like a micro crafting system. You can fish it. Is it, it multiplayer? Bugs. So there's a bit of a, like a Pokemon bit. It's multiplayer in a sense. So there's a Nintendo Online method where you can go to and visit other people's worlds. The way we're playing it, and this is the this is the main highlight. I've said this before because I did not know this when I was a teenager that you could literally go and grow your own land party. But that's what I've done. So I've got two gamer kids, a wife and a me. And so the four of us can play together. And mm-hmm. like you've got a leader and followers. And so the leader can go to their tent and do all the main things. And the other people can walk around on screen with them, pick stuff up. And uh, so you, you can yeah. interact together. And it's actually kind of nice. It's not as directly um, co-op as some other like couch co-op games. But uh, it's nice to see that. And and to be honest, I only mentioned it because I wanted my <laughs> reaction when I started talking Horizons on uh, for, for for the uh, for, to underscore. Um, I don't have and I have no interest in uh, early access to Facebook Horizon. Um, that will come out at some point and I'll deal with it then. You know, I just I, I just don't. So mm-hmm. don't worry. Um, I know nothing of that. And if it's going to be good or terrible. I, I do think that, though, the one thing I was going to say with this whole, uh, you know, global situation at the moment, I feel like VR has kind of let us down um, because although and you guys did a good job at calling out a number of the methods that people can kind of meet together with. I still feel like we've not hit the nail on the head with that. Like I've, I used to do it. I used to meet with my team. I used to have a stream team. We'd meet in alt space and you would try to put a Google Doc up and you try to like deal with a a spreadsheet or a presentation you were trying to give, you know, to the group. And it was really cumbersome. And I don't feel like we've matured much past that. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing that I saw uh, tweeted by Callum Underwood, I think, uh, this week, or tweeted at him when he was asking the question, uh, was Mozilla Hubs, which looks really uh, neat. It's like a, yeah. a 2D yeah. and VR uh, yeah. merged capability to meet uh, in, in a virtual space. Is, is that uh, Mozilla from... Firefox, yeah, Mozilla? yeah, the Firefox yeah. folks, yeah. So they they made this kind of virtual meeting area that looks a lot like uh, the drop in environment in a lot of the games that you've played. But uh, probably alt spaces like campfire scene is the first place that it looks like. It's yeah. kind of naturey and all that, and you get together. Nice. I don't know if you can like show documents stuff. or stuff. Any of you guys tried that out? No, I haven't. I haven't heard of it from no. it yet. But I mean, I do like. Uh, like in general, what Mozilla does. So yeah, I am interested in that, and then especially because I've I said it already a couple of times. Like I want to get my workflow into a virtual reality environment. Yeah. Like yeah. even if it's as simple as like just having like a, a huge screen and uh, like a whiteboard or like you know at least something that you can work in, yeah. that would be that would be epic. It just feels yeah. like even a like if 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 someone could do for meetings in VR or, or virtual space, mm-hmm. um, what Google did for search engines. What mm-hmm. I mean is. Back for those who were old enough to have seen Google when it first launched against like Hotbot and other search engines, when other search engines actually existed, <laughs> um, simplicity, just like something really yeah. simple, works across uh, devices, you know, just. And, and I don't think it's it's that that like the the virtual part of it is like kind of like holding it back. I think it's rather like the input method. I think that really I needs some you. work. 
to get it like nailed down into like something that doesn't feel like too cumbersome, but it's like adds to the experience. Mm -hmm. But just like, as far as I know, there isn't really, I mean, there are some solutions for having your keyboard in virtual reality, but there isn't like a single yeah. good one. I think. Mm -hmm. I think this, it'll this come with the uh, with, with with the Musk brain interface, or uh, like because yeah. our our ability to create content or input into a system is not of sufficient bandwidth today. So yeah, all right. And I think I think you know after all this going on, I think we're going to see a huge investment into these platforms in improving yeah. them, um, because people realize now how crucial they are and how really how how good they are in VR as well. And you know, and, and the crazy point. thing is that it's been going on for quite a, quite a few years because I know that a couple of Years ago, I went to La, uh, Laval Virtual, and mm. there was a Belgian company there who won the prize for best virtual reality enterprise uh, development. And they were fully focused on making uh, virtual reality environments for the work environment. So yeah. no gaming aspect whatsoever, yeah. but really like really business oriented. And that's that's been now two, three years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's been like definitely like, I hope since then, like some developments in that. Yeah. So. Well, no, they're, they're... even if people aren't convinced about it, opportunists are going to launch at it. It's just like with an app market, right? If there's an if there's an app possibility for kids, there's going to be a hundred of them like pop up mm. all over, you know, all over the globe because people are trying to get the spare change yeah. from people. Same thing here with this, something like this happening. Even if there isn't a market for it, mm. someone's going to go after that. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, there are a bunch of apps you can use for different things like, uh, you know, education and, and, and uh, presentations. Maybe maybe we should just highlight some next week on the show. And, and and see which ones are you know pretty pretty good to jump into. I know we're not there yet, um, <laughs> but it also uh, it, it also shows the state of VR where now suddenly, uh, way more companies are interested in this because they are forced into using it, yeah. and like the forcing part says enough about how good it is right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's ne like ne next week we can talk about oh, some. I was gonna say it's a good suggestion. I I'd skip a week though because Half Life Alex and educational apps mm -hmm. is kind of a funky. You know, meld yeah. between We're, the two. It's Maybe a diverse we... mix. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you can learn some science from that. Yeah. yeah. Plus, people are in need of it now. They are in need sure. of it. Yeah. That's the thing. And I don't. Again, there's just not enough right now. But they're really also in need of right. Half-Life. I agree. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, would you say that Animal Crossing was your highlight of the week, then, Zim? Uh, I didn't. Met, oh, sorry. I, I plugged it and I didn't <laughs> loop back. Um, I'll make it very, very quick because I've been talking for ages. Um, Middle Sander. I don't think I spoke about yes. that on the podcast. You did. We, you, we you covered it in releases game. before you left. Before, yeah. but did I talk about my experience no. with it? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's great. It's really good. It's Unreal Engine Four. The mist or the fog uh, represented in that game gets to a level that I didn't think you could really represent in VR. And I've been, as as Mike introduced me, actually, I used to do mountaineering quite a bit, and so I've 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 been in the thick of you know the middle of a cloud on the top of a mountain. I know what that looks like. And the closest I've ever been to representing that in VR is in Middle Sander, uh, Iceland VR. Don't search for Middle Sander because you'll never spell it right. Um, Iceland VR on Steam. It's only four or five quid and uh, you'll get about maybe 45 minutes out of it, but really worthwhile for what's done. Don't do what I did. I couldn't figure Jump out. Off. Oh. <laughs> Jump off what? Jump off the mountain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't figure out the uh, smooth locomotion, which is just click the left thumbstick if you're on a Rift platform. The mm. smooth locomotion is so much better than the teleport in that. But mm. but I, I felt so immersed. Like I literally laid down on this oh. kind of divot in the beach and like just that. like just took in the environment <laughs> for a couple of minutes because it was that awesome. <laughs> it's That's crazy nice. that VR can do that, right? Like yeah. I remember like the first time I went into the lap and uh, I got just like orbs and like I transported myself to that like the mm. scenery scenery places. Yeah. And the first experience it's like you can't even describe that when you see that. Mm. Yeah. And I know that uh, Chris Hanny, uh, who we had as a guest on the show, uh, mm -hmm. he took that recommendation as well that you did. And uh, he tried it out as well. And I think he was also very impressed with the visual fidelity of that Iceland VR experience. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, if that's now, like, this is like when I remember watching Jurassic Park when it first launched. And I was like, at some point, that's going to be a game. Like, that's mm -hmm. going to be in a game, that level of detail. It, it's just great. It's really, really good. If you're looking for a kind of a find your center, just, you know, chill out experience, then... That's a very good one. Solid recommendation. What about you then, Nathie? What have you been up to, dude? Yeah, so let's first go to the to the chat. So Bugbytes has uh, been replaying Hellblade. Uh, mm. 
not bad not bad at all yeah. yes yes uh then we have super Fupa, played at a new pistol whip level full throttle on a repeat so rad yes and then we have dog box finally finished finishing realms a classic a very like you know hidden gem nowadays i thought the developer was still working on something for the future i think uh, but it's something vague i can remember i don't know correct me if i'm wrong um then we have eric hartley who uh, uh dove into redemption's guild uh, more half-life vr with dk1 and hydra seems legit <laughs> like casual uh lots of uh, vr conferences and that's uh that's about it for him uh we have mighty quinn uh who played star trek real vr fishing also very relaxing if you like you know is, is that one game and... star trek real vr fishing? yeah yeah of course yeah that's one thing yeah it's like a dlc um and then we have echo arena that he also played last but not least gaming science teacher um also star trek star trek bridge crew big screen and rec room quests with my friends oh, yes nice very, very nice. social right solid mix there yeah yeah so um as you can see I have a ginormous VR face right now. I don't know. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> For some reason, it just sticks with me. Like usually, oh, it's kind of gone now, right? When we before we started, it was like it was bad. Before it, we but you can still it see like it. He, it was like he had like two eyebrows on the top here, and yeah. was just like looking around like that. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, but there is a good reason for it. I've been playing some some random game with zombies, some spiders, and soldiers uh, on the Valve Index. <laughs> that, that's all I can say. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> nice. it, okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, on to you, uh, Mike. Okay. Um, well, a bit like Zim, I've been playing a lot of pancake stuff. Uh, I played Animal Crossing. I'm really enjoying it as well. It Loving did? it. Okay. Like, yeah, like, yeah, cool. like, like, How would you uh, describe wait, it? Wait, wait, wait. Do, do, I, do I need to get into this? Am I missing out by not it, playing it? It's one of those things, I think, that you will love it or you'll hate it. Yeah. It's very, very slow. It's like a life simulator, but very, very slow. There's no, so slow. There's no real goals. You can do anything at your own pace. It's just about collecting bugs and just like living a little, having a bit of escapism, you know? Hang on, hang on. It's a fun and, then. Any, oh. Anything at your own pace is a bit unidirectional or bi-directional, but it should be unidirectional because it's like, if you want to go fast, no. It's yeah. more Caribbean and it's in its undertake. Everything yeah, is true, slow. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been enjoying that. I, I also played uh, the Resident Evil 3 demo, which is nice. uh, available yes, on Steam nice. now. Recommend yeah. it, by the way. It's only 20 minutes long, but it gives you a good taste of what has uh, to come in that game, which is coming out next month. Uh, and I've also completed Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which I absolutely adored. I thought that game was yeah. beautiful and uh, yeah, highly recommend it if you're into that. And, kind and did of you platformer. play all of these on PC or was it yep. then Switch? Uh, and... Well, uh, Animal Crossing is on Switch. Uh, the, yeah, other, yeah. the other two are on PC. Uh, but the VR experience that I want to highlight is something I've, I've probably talked about before on the show, and that is Emu VR. Um, it's kind of like a retro uh, video yeah. game emulator for virtual reality. Um, so basically, you can play all the old retro consoles and games as long as you can find the files for them, basically. Um, and the cool thing is with this experience is you have your own bedroom uh, that you can decorate with your own movie posters and artwork. You can really make it your own space. And then you can place like multiple old school like CRT TVs around, uh, plug up all the different consoles to them and play all the classics till your heart's content. Uh, but what's really cool about this is that they recently added an update to the experience where you can add light gun support. So this means that you can play um, light gun games like Duck Hunt, for example, on the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can play Time Crisis on the PlayStation 1 and you can play like House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast. But what makes this even better is that you can have all three games running at once, for example, and shoot between the screens. So you could be playing... Okay. Duck. Yeah, so this is, like, asking. this is like pro level. So you can be <laughs> shooting a duck and then like the, 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 light, the light gun at the House of the Dead screen and then take out some zombies, then jump into Time Crisis and duck in and out of cover and take some bad guys in that as well. So Heck. when you when you play them all three at once, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, and, and, and this really just shows off the magic of VR because you couldn't do this. It, it, it's not physically possible any other way other than in virtual reality. Oh, no. um, so it's a really, really cool experience. And the fact that you've got light guns now, which you can also spin and gunsling like a like Robocop, basically, when he's like <laughs> flicking his gun around, is totally badass. Um, 
and it's completely free you know that that's the most amazing thing about it so if you want to check it out emu vr yeah. uh go and check out the website which i think is just called emu vr and then just email the developer to add them add you to their discord where you can get the latest download uh which is just on pc by the way i should preface that it's so not available a question about that because I, I dabbled back in 2014 with emulators and and these kind of virtual reality arcades i understand the the shell mm -hmm. Uh, is is uh, the, the emulator itself is, is 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 free, but are the actual titles underneath like how do you get access to the content part of it? Like it, that's got to yeah, be the dark side of the web, right? That's the reason yeah, why yeah, it's free. Of course, but... of course yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <I was> like... <laughs> and, and like, I just want to preface like I don't condone piracy in any way. Um, you know, these are these are like retro, retro, retro games. I've probably bought a thousand times over in the past anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that doesn't justify it, but still. <laughs> Um, so I won't go, you know, like if you want to find the games, you'll, you have to search them out yourself. But, that, uh, but, you know, once you do get up and running, it is a magical experience. and I'd yeah. highly recommend it. So. It's amazing, though, like that, that three screen shot. That, tell me yeah. you put that on video somewhere. Is that, it is, it, awesome. it is on a video, actually. Yeah, I did upload a video. I think it's a couple of weeks back now uh, where I showed that actually in action. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Really, really, uh, really cool experience. <laughs> nice. Um, so cool. Let's get into uh, some news then. And the first bit of news, of course, this week uh, is about Half-Life Alex, and that is that the preload has now gone live on Steam, meaning that you can download the game in advance and get ready uh, prior to it going live on Monday, the 23rd of March, which is two days away. It's incredible. I can't believe this has come around so fast now. The, uh, the download for the game is 48 gigabytes, uh, which unpacks to a total of around 68 gigabytes. So, you know, with Zim clearing out his SSDs, you should have plenty <laughs> of space now uh, to, uh, to get the game on there. Obviously, if you do have an SSD spare, it's always recommended that you install, like, you know, a, a, an important game like this on an SSD so you get, you know, the best load times, you know, because load times in Half-Life were you know, a challenge in the past, they would really break up the gameplay. So hopefully that's not the case with Alex, uh, but we'll find out in a couple of days. Uh, the game goes live at 10 a.m. Pacific time and 1 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, so this means it will be live here in the U.K. at 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. in Europe. So if you're sort of, you know, taking time off work or you're already at home on quarantine, then, you know, this is the time you need to get ready. I think Nathie and I are both planning to live stream the game. Uh, is that right, Nathan? You're still planning to do that, or you've got other plans uh, now? Maybe yeah, other plans now. No, I, I think so. I think okay. so. I still want um, to so that. you know, either way, we're going to have content on our channels if you're interested in checking yes. it out on Monday. Um, but yeah, what about you guys? Are you sort of getting hyped now? Are you getting excited for the game? You you seem sort of getting prepared for it. Yeah, definitely going to stream it at some stage. It just depends on work for me. Like yep. uh, you know, if I if I if I have the time to be able to, uh, I will. Games downloaded, paid for, and pre-installed. Everything's as clean as a whistle. So, fingers crossed. Now. Yeah, I, awesome. I still need to. I still need to, need to install it. But I did see the preload uh, popping up. Uh, yeah. So I'll probably do that in the next week. Yeah. So, so for me, I had this like kind of crazy idea of like live streaming the whole game in one session, and like I know, I, like it could be like, the best, it could be the best idea, it could be the worst yes. idea I've ever had, uh, and I, I, I think it's probably unlikely that I'm going to be able to do it just because I'll just, I'll just be too, so tired. I think. But you're um, going to enjoy the game a little bit as well, no? Like, it, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you're going to be. I think I would enjoy it still. Um, you will. Like, like, I've like, done like, that. Like, what is the play play time? It's like what seven, hours. eight hours. They reckon 16. it's like, like 10, 10 to 12 hours, I think, if not yeah, more. But yeah. like, like, I mean, spending that long in virtual reality near the end, you're getting a little bit like tired, yeah. I would well, say. I've like, done that. Like, I mean, I did, I did all no, of it. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm saying like, it's still enjoyable the it last is. two hours. It can't be. So. The thing is, you're, you're going to have the same thing. It's a, it's a stamina game, no matter which way you look at it. Mm. And there's a hill, right? So you start yeah. off, you go up, you get to the point where it's like, oh god, this is a pain in the ass. Well, that's what I mean. And then, and then you get past that, and and you get into the like just static plateau of like, okay, now I'm playing the game, and and that's when your head clears, and you can really just kind of flat out enjoy it for oh. as long as it lasts, yeah. but, as long as that, some part me, of you doesn't yeah. kick out. Like for me, it'd be my feet because I'm flat footed, yeah. and yeah. about eight hours, nine hours in they start to go and i'm just like it's not my back or anything it's not like back muscles which a lot of people who sit in office chairs like many of us uh for for the whole day that that's normally what goes for people but for me it's the feet yeah so. yeah the, so the, like the thing for me it's mostly like you know, I, I like to do like my sessions in vr like rather short like a maximum of like two hours since that's like the the time that i can like really enjoy a title 
yeah. then afterwards I, I take a break. And even if the break is like an hour or two hours and then afterwards I jump back in. Yeah. That works much better for me and allows me to enjoy the title much more. Yeah, it'll be an interesting experiment because I've never streamed like that long before. And to prepare, I've like had to rejig my uh, index controllers because obviously they're, they've got an internal battery. I don't have a second set. So I've had to be, get, be a bit creative and I've got a battery pack with mm. two wires going to them, like the Hydra days. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to be playing that oh. way. So um, oh. they're going to be charging and playing at the same time. But that's my plan. Whether it will work out or not, who knows? I could just be in for an hour and then decide to nope out. It's, uh, it's, but... it's crazy. I bought I bought a 20, 2080. I have two extra Valve Index controllers. I also yeah. got extra base stations. I have eight base stations in total, old ones. But then I also had the new Steam VR 2.0s. Um, but um, just saying, it's not, you need more than eight hours. Okay. It, and also, uh, that's it. Uh, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I can't um, do this. <laughs> so, so just be aware. Uh, there are spoilers out there already surfacing on the. Yeah, internet. that's true. Yeah, if yeah. You want to avoid them? Don't... Just be careful of what you click on over the next couple of days. It's going to be annoying. Like seriously, if you if you're planning to play it, you know, yeah. just just don't go on Twitter. It's the same with the watching series and stuff. Someone like there's a troll yeah. who's going to be in comment sections of people's videos or yeah. are going to tweet people are going to be on Discord spreading the news. It's annoying, yeah. I know. Just play the game, stay in VR as long as you can. <laughs> don't get out of it. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's why Mike is wiring everything, so he can't get any spoilers. <laughs> he's yeah. in there. He even sleeps in, sleep yeah. in that life. He just, you know, when he's when he's done, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna sleep in this corner yeah. here. Exactly. I'm gonna be fine. That, that's why the head cramp is next to him, so that when he oh, wakes God. up and he sees that he's thing that he does like, he like loses. Uh, it's a pillow. Yeah. 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 That's good. Uh, so there you go. Half Life Alex available to preload now. Hype is real. Can't wait. Oh God. Um, Next bit of news this week is that we got some specs for both the upcoming new consoles from Microsoft and Sony. Uh, further details were provided for both the Xbox One Series X and the PS5. Uh, did anyone catch the PS5 live stream? Oh my God, it's so I... wacko. Like, very, that very guy excellent. is... What's his name, Dave? Uh, Mike Cerny, I think it is. Isn't yeah, it? Jesus, yeah. he's... Uh, oh my God, he's like... If, if, the comments are great. One of them oh, said, man. I think it was like, this guy could tell me to kill my father and after 50 minutes I'd, I'd do it you know something like that because he's so robotic in his presentation like he looks like an android he should have been cast for star trek this this fellow <laughs> yeah and the thing the thing is if you missed it um the live stream was titled the road to ps5 yeah and a lot of people were saying like thinking this is going to be a reveal like video like you know they're going to show trailers like uh, unveil some games that they're going to be releasing on the new hardware sadly that wasn't the case it was a real technical deep dive and they were like going into how many transistors each component has and how fast the ssds were and how they were optimized and wow. although i appreciate the technical detail it completely <laughs> bored me to tears and and like you said you know i wasn't alone the community definitely felt it as well yeah. um those because it was a it was a chat right that you that you were in like they're always yeah. negative they're though. always yeah. negative yeah, yeah. they're yeah. always yeah. but negative. i think i think the video yeah. has has like three hundred thousand likes now and one hundred fifty thousand yeah. dislikes so there's good yeah, good percentage they... of people were confused anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. Should... but that's it like but there's also the side to say that you don't get to see that kind of stuff about graphics pipelining very often and again, no. another commenter was saying on the on on the YouTube uh, cut of it, talked about um, walking away with like a, a graphics engineering <laughs> um, degree. degree. Yeah, <laughs> and you listen uh, to it. I mean, the guy's cadence in his voice and everything. He sounds and the fact that he he went through that entire presentation that way, it's incredible. Like he he sounds like um, some very practiced lawyers that I know. Yeah, um, he's just immaculate in his presentation. So I love seeing mm -hmm. that kind of creature surface because mm -hmm. it's it's amazing to think like these are the people who be... are trapped in a in a closet engineering their entire lives come uh, out and yeah. then you put them on stage for a presentation. It's great. I love it. Yeah. But to be fair though, like like in the chat, like Nim Sony says as well, like the stream was called a deep dive, uh, so it was rather appropriate to have like you know all the technical details to be revealed during that time. Um, yeah. So I, I, I mean, if it's if it's a deep dive, it's kind of makes a, a little bit more sense I, to like really. It's not a community event, you know. It's yeah. more like talking about th the technological aspects. Yeah. They, they, they could have maybe communicated it better, but on the other side, it creates hype again because we were all expecting something else. So you mm. spread some extra news that you know in the end is kind of unnecessary. 
Uh, so it's um, but yeah, it kind of reminds me of John Carmack when he talks. You know, very uh, yeah. you know very sort of like on the same level. You know, goes through it very methodically. So in very similar to Carmack. Carmack's a mousetrap though, because Carmack leads in with stuff that you can get, and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. And then before like you, he just keeps going you. with these like these sentences that just run through detail, and it goes off the deep end, and you don't realize it, and you're like. What the hell is Where he going I? on about? Where, where are we? I don't get. I haven't understood the last three minutes. I am laughing here at Subafapa's comment. He said, "I slept well after that talk, actually." <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, um, but in terms of specs, like I won't go into like the full specs. But basically, on paper, the PS5 is roughly twice as powerful as the PS4 Pro in oh. terms of GPU, CPU, and RAM. So it's going to be a bit of a beast of a console by all accounts. Um, PSVR was mentioned very briefly during the stream in relation to audio specifically, but nothing really any more than that. Um, all we know so far is that the PS5 will be backwards compatible with the current PSVR headset, uh, which is great news for those out there that have invested in that current headset. Although it's unclear right now which PSVR games will also be backwards compatible because there's a bit of hit and miss between what games will and what games won't be backwards compatible. Um, of course, hopefully we'll get a new PSVR headset eventually alongside the new console, but I think we've talked about this on the show before that we don't think it's going to happen just as the console releases. Um, on the Microsoft side, we also got some tech specs, which of course sparked the big, you know, comparison between the hardware uh, of the two upcoming consoles. But as we know from the past, you know, the specs on paper doesn't really matter so much because when you bear in mind, like the PS4, for example, it's not as powerful as like the newer Xbox consoles, but it still sold, sells significantly better than than Xbox right now. Um, but again, spec wise, the Xbox One Series X is roughly twice as powerful as their current flagship console, the Xbox One X. A lot of confusion with the X's in these Xbox console generations, but it is mm. what it is. Um, but basically, these these two machines now they're, they're they're becoming more and more like just high end gaming PCs, you know, in terms of specs. And I think you know at this point, although you know there there is some differences in the hardware, it's always 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 about the content. You know, I think that is the most important thing. Yeah, uh, content is king. Yeah. And I feel like at this current point in time, Sony is definitely winning that race because they're they're pushing out some really amazing content at the moment. I think. Yeah, but true. Xbox in general has been like slacking a little bit in that department i think the past couple of years even like they had a few really solid titles but they they just started off really well and i think everyone kind of expected it to keep on going on that role back yeah. in the beginning but yeah, it can't, it, i don't know but it's hard to to compete with of course a company like like sony that's so much so much experience in gaming for so much years already and have been acquiring all of these kind of studios and like even the novel feels like we see them doing that for virtual reality as well yeah a and oculus are really competing for like the best kind of dev studio so yeah like they, they are basically securing their future a little bit yeah. into the gaming market as well yeah. so if, like, if vr becomes the big thing that everyone is expecting it to be then sony has already acquired a couple of those yeah, studios yeah. I, Plus, I, I feel like if there if um if, if there's like you know a momentum going on with one console like for example nintendo switch right now playstation 4 for a well then the good titles come with that. But if yeah. you as a console maker kind of falls behind, then it's also hard to get developers on board. Even if you pay them uh, loads of money, then they become maybe timed exclusives. But with Sony, it's like they just have an exclusive. They, mm. they had so many exclusives that never came to any other platform. And that has something to do with their success. They can pull that off with the I, I do. I do with. wonder then if for like other like companies like like the bigger ones that have not invested yet in virtuality um if, if they see like titles like for example now half-life alex dropping are they gonna be like did we miss the ball like you know are we, are we too late mm. now with investing Since well i think sony has been doing like, it for such a long time already. the whole industry is is about to watch this go down yeah, i think yeah. they're all waiting holding their breath they're going to see what the reaction is to this game and, and this is why i keep on saying this game is so important to the vr industry because i think a lot of the success rides on this game from yeah. a traditional mm -hmm. gamer's perspective you know yeah um, true there's gonna be I, I think, a lot I think of it, community hurt though i think in this because the price tag for entry is still pretty high mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we've you know we're in the global situation we're in at the moment is drying up the already dry VR equipment that's out there. Yeah, that's the true. secondary VR equipment market is 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 a pretty big deal. And one of the things that I want to encourage people to do, if you have like me an unfortunate horde of VR headsets that you're not using, 
think about putting those out there, not just to make money, but actually just help people get into VR who want to get into VR. Because in the same way that I've had to deal with the work situation, a lot of companies are kind of like scraping around for laptops, get their people set up remotely, you know, to, to try to overcome this funny period that we're going through in 2020. I think that um, VR equipment, you know, that secondary market and tertiary market are are one of the strongest places for VR to kind of get its its momentum, you know, for especially mm -hmm. for people who are priced out of it right now. Mm. I, I disagree with with a little part of that. I don't think that that like the price point of virtual reality is like maybe too expensive in order to invest in, as long as the the quality that it delivers, the experience that it delivers is up to par with that. I think oh, that, that people that's, are that's willing to to yeah. spend money on that as long as they indeed get a return on that, <laughs> that that's the main the problem question, right now that indeed that is the question like can half-life alex and the games afterwards like deliver that kind of experience that people <laughs> are willing to pay for but i mean even if even it. if you're going like with half-life alex right and i believe they've got uh, windows mixed reality support um even if you go for a, a secondhand hundred dollar headset right that, that's going to give you something decent and you're able to play the game you still need a pc and that but that's for all gaming, like, yeah. But like, if for example, you would like to play like uh, I don't know, like the new Modern Warfare or like uh, you know some new game that comes out recently, and you want to play it on the best settings or you want to play it on this, you will still have to, yeah, but dish but, out, you know. But but on the other side, like most people who play Call of Duty or other games, they play it on medium range PCs, sometimes even low end. I think there's yeah, a bigger sure. market for that sure. than high but, end. But that will happen uh, to VR eventually as well. We're now with the first generation. Once we hit a second generation, then we'll have lower end PCs that are yeah. available for a much lower <laughs> price that we'll be able to. It's just a shift that we'll be seeing. But uh, we're, of course, we're the first first adopters now, so it's it's yeah. it makes sense I, it's, that it's, it's kind of expensive. I, I think uh, I think you know when when Half Life Alex drops, it's it's going to be very good for the industry but it's also going to have some you know it will um, take some you know uh, some problems with it too because sure. as you said the buyer becomes higher um uh, this this game is made by a big team with a huge budget it's made by valve who has been you know on top of the the, the gaming industry for years so they can pull this off but you can't expect this from almost anyone who's working on VR right now to make something like that. Even if you- But it's like a, what Mike says, it might be uh, important to get that it is, push. It is, uh -huh. but that push can also claim uh, a hype that uh, people cannot deliver right now because it's not the time yet yeah. to be able to to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah, sure. it's an example like hey, this, this is what we can expect in the future, but it doesn't say it's instantly gonna change because the budgets are still quite you know low yeah, exactly. uh, for for most devs so the, I, I yeah i don't know we'll see we'll see but the, i hope that valve is gonna share the numbers of have live alex to also show all the let's say pancake uh developers that there is definitely a market here that can you question, know, question are, are, are you or what you're saying i'm just trying to understand this are you basically saying that hey here's this uh you know potentially golden gem um that is going to attract people in and then they kind of feel a little bit swindled if the other stuff in that environment right now yeah, isn't at the same not. level of quality. But yeah, yeah, but that doesn't really happen. Like, like if if you look mm. at like new consoles that got released, like I'm, I'm, I always give you the, the example of the first original Xbox. Like the first original Xbox came with with Halo. Halo was the big title mm. that was going to push that console forward. But after that, there were like a lot of titles that just couldn't match to that initial Halo title. I, but I still, it sold like yeah. enormous yeah. numbers. Like, and it immediately competed with PlayStation, who has like been been doing that for years. So, and they've been in that market, and they've been able to like convince people to. Convince that kind of so platform. what you're saying, Rowdy, so I, is it just takes one, and I would agree with that. That yeah, you need the I, hardware, I that. and you need one bit of software that get, that gives people the value that they feel like they got yes. their money's worth. And yeah. if this game I gives them think, their money's worth, yeah. it's going to do a lot of good putting wind in the sails for mm -hmm. VR this yeah. year. But it needs to it needs to be that kind of thing, like that everyone says, like, "Wow, like I want that," or it, it needs it, it needs to hit the nail right. Mm -hmm. That's what well, I think. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. This will happen. Um, but let's quickly just round up the consoles, um, because obviously, you know, with PS5 and Xbox One X uh, Series X, uh, we know that obviously PS5 are already invested heavily in VR, but we know that Xbox are very wary about VR still at this very time. So ultimately, I think that could be the thing that sets them back, especially if like VR does have this ultimate like quick re, re you know uh, uh, 
boost because of Half-Life Alex. And if, if Microsoft aren't jacked up to have support baked into their new console, then they could be left behind a little bit, I think, in the console race. But it will be interesting to see. Like, I don't know if you guys are interested in these consoles at all, because obviously we're all PC sure. gamers uh, and Quest gamers anyway. Um, but, you know, on a personal level, are you guys interested in these yeah. consoles? Oh, yeah. Because it pushes, again, the technology forward. And if you see what Sony has done just in general for virtual reality, I think it's it's amazing. Like, yeah. uh, it's still like the biggest virtual reality headset out there, I believe. Yeah. I'd take a, point, an Astrobot right? 2 launch title for, for PS5 yeah. VR headset. Yeah, for sure. Any day. I was going to say, like, I mean, what, what part, what camp are you guys sitting in? Because, like, for me, a PS5 is of no interest until PS VR 2 hits, really. Um, like, unless it gives me some advantage playing my PS VR existing oh. games, <laughs> then there's no reason for me to buy it. So I think, I'm, uh, yeah. Xbox so I think big, is a forgettable one for me. Like. And, and the thing is with Xbox, because of all the content is generally on PC anyway. If you if you're a PC mm. gamer, you're not missing out on anything. Yeah. You know, uh, so you basically have Xbox content on your PC. So that's why I favor yeah. PS5 in the console race because it's content I can't play anywhere else. Same. Yeah, it's the exclu- exclusives. Yeah. 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 So that is um, Xbox. Uh, Series X, I keep on getting it wrong. Um, Xbox. It is so confusing. X. It's always so confusing. What was uh, Xbox One? Like, like, make some sense of your damn numbering. Yeah, <laughs> just call it like the Xbox Five. Jesus, get it over with. Um, and PS Five. So, uh, last chunk of news, and it's a big, hefty chunk this week, is about the Oculus Game Developers Showcase, uh, which took place uh, this week between Monday and Thursday. Uh, mm. And this is where Oculus shared updates on content that they would have unveiled during GDC, uh, which was cancelled due to the global pandemic. Um, but what we got was a few updates about games we already knew about, many of which are releasing next week, which Sim has <laughs> got his hands full uh, this week and we'll be covering shortly in releases. Um, but we also got some details about uh, some other bits and pieces. And, and let me start off with uh, an, up, an update that's coming to Quest uh, at the end of the month, which is a redesigned universal menu. Um, now, it doesn't sound that exciting, but it's got some unique features about it. Uh, and this new menu, it looks very similar to Oculus Dash on the PC side, actually. So if you're familiar with Dash, you'll probably uh, sort and, of know what I'm talking about. Is that a good thing? Um, I, w- I think it's a good thing uh, in that you can now bring up the menu uh, in a game without having to drop back to the Quest yeah, okay. home environment, which is annoying. Yeah. A, a, a better version of Dash, because I'm not a big fan of Dash on PC. Same. It's very okay. no? I, I rarely use half of the buttons on it, but... Uh, oh, this okay. version might be better. Yeah. This default the, the positioning that, is yeah. really annoying because it's like right here yeah. and your hands are just hanging there and you just you end know. up pushing buttons and there's yeah. no like yeah. way to just push that okay, I triggered tray some, somewhere else. I triggered the whole place. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Go, go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this, the, but the problem is, say if you want to um, you know, adjust settings or record content like us, for example, you have to jump out of the game back to the main menu, press yeah. record, then jump back into the game again. Yeah. Whereas this is going to make it a bit more seamless. So the menu will just pop up overlaying the game and then you can just access the settings from there which is i think a nice touch the thing i've always right? liked this like the the browser pull out the browser pull out you can like pin that to a certain screen on dash on pc yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no Doesn't i agree that, but that, that like that that cost us 10 15 percent in cpu headroom on pc on on quest i'm nervous that's going to do the same thing Mm, I, I say it's like it looks like Dash. I wouldn't say it's probably going to function like Dash. But if it's uh, an overlay on the existing game, it's yeah. got to take something. Yeah, it can't be maybe. for free. You know, you don't get that kind of thing for free. I remember talking to Carmack about that kind of thing because it was yeah. like if you're trying to do these fancy tricks and at the same time, how are you going to how are you going to do onboard capture? Because onboard capture takes a, a slice yeah, of that CPU uh, as well. As long as it has nothing to do with with number, uh, uh, what is it, like 76, I think we're fine. <laughs> like, I, I welcome it as long as there's a toggle and I can turn that shit off. That's fine. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so alongside this new menu that Zim will be turning off, uh, they're also <laughs> uh, I think that's a good point, though. I, I yeah, think that's a good yeah, point. Fair. Uh, fair. Um, they're also adding multi-window support for 2D apps. So they're going to be starting this with Oculus Browser. Um, so we're getting closer to that sort of scene in Minority Report where you can have multiple windows up at, at That's the same really time. what they're going for, right? Like everybody's seen that movie. Oh, I do think that is what like the, the ultimate goal is. It is yeah. cool though, I'm not going to lie. So yeah, that so- one is particularly of interest because for those who operate on a Windows operating system, unless you purchase or download uh, an app that allows you to virtualize another monitor, that is not actually built into the Windows OS. And for some time now, NVIDIA and Windows, Microsoft, I should say, 
have been both working on that for VR mm. because on a Quest, you've got a different environment. So the multi-display thing is a bottleneck that you might consider if you've been using you know, virtual desktop or similar apps for some time, even Oculus' own, it's mm -hmm. been a limitation. And why is that? Because it's baked wait, into the, the, the OS. You, you now say like if you're running a Windows platform, are they, is Oculus actually available already for other platforms like, like Linux, for example? I, no. I didn't think that was the case, no. right? No, no, it's Windows 10 only. Yeah, yeah, I yeah on so. PC. Yeah. Um, but that's so what yeah, I'm saying. They're breaking that with this with this extension, and it's really cool because yeah. I think in the in the video that they're showing, what Mike is alluding to is um, it, three monitors is what they showed. I think. Yeah, three windows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Um, so that's um, some nice little updates coming to Quest. Right. Um, nothing on the Rift S side, sadly. It's kind of still being left in the dark in terms of, um, you know, like hand tracking and, and everything else, which is a real shame, I think, uh, especially, you know, if you've yeah. invested in one. I do feel bad for you. Seriously, if you're watching and you haven't bought a headset yet and you're in the in the Oculus, uh, you know, field, just just get a Quest. Just just don't bother with the Rift S. I, I, just don't I, do I, it. I would still use a Rift S for PC content any day of the week over a Quest, though. Um, purely for the comfort and, oh, and the latency, yeah. and, it, and, as, uh, and as a content creator, like it's almost yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but um, we're talking about the consumer. I don't value for money-wise, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to argue with that. Is, but still, yeah. like it, it, it wouldn't be smart from Oculus to focus on Oculus Quest only and not. They're, they're already doing that. Well, we but, <laughs> they started <laughs> last year with that. We, we may have a reason why later on. I oh, love yeah. having oh. the four crew on. It's great. S save save Shut that. Like, I'm just basically bank. saying it sucks uh, up on this point, just content-wise. It's just, there's yeah. nothing to play. You can have a headset, but there's if you get a quest, you get like a new game almost every two, three months. <laughs> That's uh, already uh, like special. At least though, with 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 Rift S, you do get the benefit of Steam VR library as well. So yeah, but, no, uh, Rift, yeah. I love my Rift S. I think Rowdy used that on the last podcast because I heard that when I was listening yeah. to you guys back this morning. Like, you yeah. forgot about the it's Oculus. Boss. Pretty much, but that's that that's what makes the quest way, way more relevant now. Yeah, right? you've, great about you've it? rolled everyone, you've rolled everyone up in the rechargeable chat batteries in the, in the controller. That, that's, just whip that's, out. that's why we do this Not podcast. To be tethered. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it's kind of, no one <laughs> right on the rift side. Um, but further to this, we did get some uh, new DLC packs uh, for both Beat Saber and Pistol Whip. <sighs> Uh, Beat Saber will be getting a Timberland uh, music pack, which launches on the 26th of March. It's going to cost $7.99 in US dollars for the pack and includes the following tracks if you're a fan of Timberland. Wait, isn't that Boots? Uh, what? Boots. Timberland. Timberland <laughs> Boots, like... yeah. Oh, Boots. Is that yeah, a yeah, producer? Yeah. No. Timbaland. It's, it's like, it's like you, you, you boys are really showing boots. your age now. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure okay, so boots. the five tracks, Timberland tracks, are has a meaning. Dumb Things, While We're Young, What I Like, and Famous. They're the five tracks, um, and they're okay. releasing wow. next week. Only five. That's uh, light compared to the other packs. Um, One of them yes. was six, right? Well, I yeah. think it was Green Day was six. Yeah, the Green Day and Imagine Dragon ones were were more, I think. Yeah, that's the lightest um, one so, so far, I think. So is this would this be a move from Beat Games, or would this be a move from Facebook? Well, In this case. We, will, we will never know. Um, but they're both one of the same nowadays. Um, yeah, that's they true. Were acquired. That's true. But it could be that this was already li lying around to happen. Um, Possibly, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this in the future. And you'll yeah. you'll you'll know why uh, now when I give you some stats on terms of in terms of sales, um, because Beat Saber has sold over two million copies today across all VR that's platforms. Insane. That's insane. Which yeah. is. Two million, yeah, which is pretty incredible. And this is the real kicker: they've sold over ten million songs through downloadable content. Wow. Um, so course. this is obviously, you know, huge, Amazing. huge uh, revenue stream for them. Like, so like I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna give uh, Timberland, who obviously is probably watching this podcast, I'm gonna give him a tip. Like next time that he he does, like you know, it, does he actually do gigs? Because he's more like a producer than anyway. What, 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 songs, what kind of music what, is it? I, I have no idea what we're talking like about. Like hip hop. Here at all. Yeah, hip -hop, uh, yeah. Uh, well, hip -hop. very broadly, yeah. But um, like next time when he performs those songs live, he should have like two people like playing Beat Saber in the background, playing Beat yeah. Saber live on the yeah. on the background of, of like the show. Like I think that I, I yeah. I'm waiting for it actually to happen to see yeah. it live on like a like a right. festival or live with like some kind of show a gig because I think that'd be amazing. Yeah. Like the there choreography and all that kind of stuff with it. Yeah, you got a so, viral video on your hands right there. You know. So what you're basically saying, I kind of hate to say it, is that microtransactions also work in VR because, in a way, you know, the game you buy it, but then the songs are also like extra things you buy, yeah. although not in a pay-to-win kind of uh, site. But mm. you know, if you don't just sell the whole game with all the songs in there, but you kind of 
sell or crisscross some other things, it works. Well, I think to a certain degree, this had a lot to do with like custom tracks um, because, you know, they made it so much easier to buy them legitimately. It's like the Napster effect. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. It's easier yeah. to buy uh, these music packs <laughs> than it is to yeah. sideload all the harder the more you, you, you uh, earn. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, like I gave up on custom <laughs> Beat Saber tracks a long time ago now I because still, I can't I, be bothered. I still honestly think that, and we'll probably talk about this later, but I still honestly think that the next headset that comes from Facebook whatever that is, will come with free Beat Saber. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because that, 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 was, that was the model that made sense right out the gates when we saw yeah. that originally, was you, 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 don't, you don't pay for the framework, you pay for the songs that you want, you know, over and above the bass. It just makes yeah. so, so much sense. Yeah. So in terms of stats, you know, congrats to, to Beat Games. I think that's yeah. a, an amazing milestone, uh, really sort of setting the trend in the industry right now. Um, next is Pistol Whipped. Uh, pistol whip, sorry, not whipped. Um, <laughs> whipped. <laughs> pistol whipped. Cool whip? Pistol whipped. Cool whip. It's the game where you whip uh, cream uh, with a pistol. Um, that's getting some uh, DLC, but this DLC is free um, and is called the Full Throttle Update. Some of the mm -hmm. chat were playing this uh, this week. Um, this update includes a new Mad Max uh, inspired level, new game modifiers, and more weapon customization with skins and stuff like that as well. Um, that update released on the 18th of March on both PC and Quest and is available okay. now for free. So uh, if you're interested, go and check that out. Um, we also got some tidbits of information about other games uh, alongside the DLC. We also got a release date for Phantom Cova Ops, uh, which is going to be releasing on both God. Oculus Quest and Rift uh, this summer on the 25th of June. <laughs> Um, which is good that we've got a date now. Uh, yeah, at least we yeah, can put that in our diaries. <laughs> uh, because having tried the game recently when I visited End Dreams, uh, the game is shaping up really, really nice. And the Rift, uh, the Rift version, particularly on Rift S, looks, looks brilliant uh, because they've really uh, spent a lot of time to upgrade <laughs> the visuals on the PC version of the game, um, which is a really nice touch. So you know, I, I, think I take both... it from your from your comment there, Mike, and a couple of comments you've made over time. That's the version you'd recommend people play. Oh if yeah, have the for option. sure. Like by, by oh, far. If, if you have the if you have the option, play it on the PC. Yeah. And the thing is, like you know, there's some games in the past, like Journey of the Gods, where it didn't really matter yeah. which platform you played on because it looked the same. Yeah. But this mm -hmm. one, it really shines on on PC. And because it's such a dark game with with a lot of lighting effects, you mm -hmm. really notice the difference on the PC. And it's a game you're meant to play seated, right? Yep. Yep. You you never actually get out of your kayak. Um, but it actually feels great. You know, the, the, the mechanics of rowing and then grabbing your equipment, which is all scattered around your kayak in front of you. So you can, you can, you know, go quiet, you can go loud, you can, there's multiple routes at times. So the reason, there's, the reason, the reason I wanted to highlight that was because if you're not moving around the tether, the cable that you're, you're tying to your PC doesn't matter. It doesn't much. matter. No, so, no. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be a fun title to look forward to. So the 25th of March, uh, 20, 25th of June, sorry, that's coming out uh, on PC and Quest. And then a couple more updates uh, in terms of like uh, Lone Echo and Echo Arena, because it seems like Lone Echo 2 has been delayed even further. Uh, obviously, it was due out last year, <laughs> um, was due for Q1 this year, but Q1's like coming to an end now. We still don't have any information yeah. about it. So it's likely that the game is going to get delayed again. Um, and on the Echo Arena side, um, it is coming to Quest uh, next week. Uh, they've got a closed alpha, which you can apply to be part of. Uh, and the alpha starts on the 26th of March. And I've put a link uh, in the description of this uh, stream so you can sign up for that closed alpha if you're interested in checking it out on Quest. I, I think by hurry by, up, though. Like, I, think, uh, I, I, think, I think it's going to be a problem if they wait like much longer because like people are probably starting to forget about the first title. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think by by the moment it comes out, there's already a new VR headset around. Yeah, uh, quite possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, I don't know why they keep pushing. Like they already have almost like no IPs going on right now, and they push them and they push them away. Um, it's because such a, like, quality. They have been so forward to that one. Like they have been, they have been uh, like doing so many marketing campaigns with that game. You know, at E3 at other places. But as Rowdy said, people forget about it so w why did you spend all the money on promoting it well you're only pushing it to a point where people don't even know it, it's around anymore. but i think you hit the nail on the head there and we're going to touch on that again later on but why they might be delaying these 
might coincide with some information we're going to share yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but and, and like you guys said, you know, I appreciate all these updates. I think it's great. You know, yeah. we're getting information about these games. But what we were wanting was some new game announcements. You know, we wanted that from that, you know, that come out like in the upcoming months, not exactly. like oh here, like June and August and maybe next year yeah. and maybe. Bleh. But even that, to a certain degree, I wouldn't mind. You know, they said, oh, like we're working on like this game. It's going to be an, an, a title for next year. At least we've got like a roadmap of stuff to look. A, a roadmap, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's just strange yeah. because they have been doing that like for the past like like years. They've yeah. always had like yeah. things like to look like you had Asgard's Wrath, you had Stormland, Medal yeah. of Honor, Lone Echo, Lone Echo Two. Yeah. Like there was always like something going on, but now it feels like you know what is like the next exactly big thing. Exactly. I mean, but we of might know Medal why. of Honor is still have, but we might know the reason why. It's um, it's funny so we... though. Like, look, reading into those announcements, I'll tell you what I got from all of that, and I know it was a little bit of uh, it was little tidbits of information. I really liked the amount of information they put forward in that um, uh, in that kind of week of content that they were dropping for game developers. In other words, clarity on re- yep. like on how to get your game through the hurdles necessary to get on the store. Yep. Like that's the most clear they've been so far. And the second thing, reading into it, and again, this will probably get me in trouble saying it, but I think from what I've seen out of Oculus in the last like month, it looks like they've developed a software tool for capturing a quest better than they have before. And I would hope they would release that publicly at some point because uh, what I can see in their footage, it's improving. And I, I would, I would hope they're like tuning that up, and eventually it'll become public release for content creators. Because I That'd see be nice. that in what they're releasing, yeah. you know. That would be nice. A, a microphone yeah. access, yeah. you know, for yeah, yeah, for direct, for direct recording, content. that type of thing. Like, I would yeah. be way more interested in that than Dash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a shame we didn't get any like just tidbits mm. to look forward to in the future. Uh, but the last bit of info I want to share is that. Um, some information from the showcase is that 20 titles now, um, VR titles in the Oculus lineup, um, have surpassed 1 million in sales, uh, which I think is great news. You know, 20 titles is, is, is a big number, uh, and it's just a great sign that the VR industry is growing. They didn't share which titles they were, but, you know, I think that news is uh, is, is, is pretty just good. Just replay so that again, Mike. 20 titles have passed how many sales? 1 million in sales across all VR platforms. Sorry, 1 million units or 1 million in dollars? 1 million in sales units passed. Yeah, okay, that's really good. Wow. Yeah. 20 so titles pretty... past a million. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh, I want that list. I want no, that list. 1 million sales it might be it might be revenue actually, sorry. It I was going to say cuz 1 million. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it, it might be revenue. Yeah, okay. apologies okay. for that. That's better. Um so yeah, that is More the um the Oculus Game Developer Showcase. Uh, obviously like Zim touched on, there's loads of information for developers that you know this was predominantly for developers um but obviously we've got some gaming information as well but if you're a developer i'd highly recommend you check out some of the youtube uh conversations particularly between like somatic bruce and yeah. the guys there on the yeah. team about yeah. like you know best practices and stuff that they can uh, it's, do too. it's good they make that content for for developers yeah. and also uh being transparent to everyone not tell one dev this and tell the other dev nothing uh by having these videos up everyone can watch them also if you're not working with them yet then you know what you can expect. So this is, and and then maybe the consumer who maybe also watches it then understands a little bit better what's going on behind the scenes. So uh, it's good for everyone. Yep. Okay, so that is all the news this week. So now let's pass over to Zim for the releases. We've Uh-oh. got some beautiful titles to talk about. Oh it's, my God. You, you're going you're gonna to love this. You really cherish this moment because it probably might not happen again for a while. <laughs> Forever. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, no, I, I just, you know, I saw Rowdy do the releases last week. Thanks, Rowdy, for picking up the uh, the bell and um, thought you did I a really, great job. I really highlighted, I really highlighted, oh, highlighted some great fantastic. titles. Yeah, I like no, the I dinosaurs. Um, I that loved Rowdy's, uh, Rowdy's quote. I got to quote Rowdy. He said, every kid goes through a dino- dinosaur phase and some kids get stuck there like rowdy <laughs> <laughs> uh, and normally like my target for the week uh when we're doing releases is find three things right rowdy did five so feck it this week i'm doing seven right so <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait 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 seven seven releases and actually they're not junk um which is surprising all right let's let, let, let's jump into this anyway um but yeah i thought i thought last week like like Mike, the tower game, uh, the crane uh, operator game that you you oh, highlighted yeah. last week, which was called VEG Sim Tower Crane Simulator, best game, twenty twenty. Um, I had an mm. uncle who did that in the UK for like 
four, it, it was many years. It was, I don't know if it was like 10 years or something, but like that job, like Mike was saying, like that's, that's daunting, you know, being up there in that crane. So mm. that was my favorite of your, of your picks last week. Uh, go back and check out Rowdy's cast last week if, uh, if you missed it. So first <laughs> one, uh, this one, and I promise you, this is not, this is not a, 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 an adult title. It's called Industrial Petting. Um, <laughs> for 14 pounds uh, by another Yeti, Great name, by the way, for a dev studio. Landed on March 17th. This is your chance to get you and your friends together to explore an alien world. This is not No Man's Sky. Find new pets, get them to love you, and sell them on the galactic market. I love that. that so it's kind of like Animal Crossing. It, it, like Animal Crossing if you, if you didn't have a soul and all you cared about was money. Um, so <laughs> you find these pets... Uh, you can <laughs> you find these pets and you basically flog them. You you mate them, you grow them, and you flog them for cash. Uh, the reason I love this is if anyone in the world has ever played Minecraft with someone, particularly a kid or someone who just loves uh, farming in that game, and it drags a server to its knees, this game is built completely around that. You make your pets, and uh, yeah, that's it. It's, it's a Steam. little bit like uh, like Slime Rancher. You remember yeah. Slime yeah, Rancher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the VR version as well. Um, it kind of reminds me of this one. I got so nervous, though, when I saw that title. I was like, Jesus, really? Industrial petting? I mean, that really doesn't sound like a kid's game. Um, I, love, I love the trailer. Like, in the trailer, you see this this computer man, like, you know, using a computer. And it shows, like, hey, this, this game supports, you know, flat, uh, uh, you know, humans, too. But you can just see the VR person running around. And then this one robot guy is just smacking the keyboard inside. Like, that's the only thing they do. Okay, so everyone raise their hands. Who's getting this instead of Half-Life Alex? Yeah. Yeah, no. Of course, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Mike, this is Mike, Mike doesn't win on the, uh, the the performance there. I don't think you're getting an Oscar for that one. <laughs> no one believed that. I wasn't giving it my all. Oh, my God. Anyway, next one. Um, and this one takes me. This is one that I think my wife would absolutely adore. All right. So I think we're back. Um Chat, let us know. Are we? Uh, did the angel of death leave us for a moment? <laughs> for those of you who are wondering what's going on, uh, we're just rejoining after a, a quick crash here. One of the things that I find really interesting, I heard um, inside inside the company that I work for, um, is that both Netflix and uh, YouTube have cut have agreed with the European Commission to cut their uh, their internet uh, quality by like twenty five percent or something. So if you find your home Netflix films aren't looking as nice as they normally are. That might be why. Um, You're helping, though. We're help Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, we're helping by uh, interrupting the podcast mid-flow. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about, uh, just starting off there, I'll, I'll, I'll begin again. So Color Space um, is a game that is uh, landing on Quest and Rift. And I kind of feel bad about that because... This game looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, it's not going to be for everybody. It's essentially a VR coloring book. And for those of you who think, well, coloring books are for kids. My wife actually bought uh, something like this, which is um, a kind of an etching book where, have you guys ever played with that paper that you use as a kid where you draw across it and it like becomes like a rainbow color underneath? Like it's all black or something like mm. that. And um, uses things like that to, to kind of help meditate and like just get to like a happy place type of thing. And this looks like uh, absolutely awesome for that to be surrounded by this beautiful world and and just, you know, coloring this world in around you. And it's replayable in that way and it looks it absolutely looks really fantastic. Cool. It looks really cool. And it's again like one of those titles that, I mean, I haven't seen something like this in, in VR. Um, maybe yeah. it's out there, I don't know. But it's the first time that I see something like this like popping up, uh, which is cool because it's, it's always nice to see something that is completely new. Yeah. But in, in terms of like, it's more like a paint dropper than a coloring book because you, you yeah. can't like color outside the lines, which would of course drive me nuts. Um, but you just drop the color in there and it kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, like but the fact that it uses is quite cool though. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it has nice. like this coloring effect. Also, like drawing uh, uh, within the lines with a VR controller is like you know it's too sensitive for that. Yeah. That's when you break. <laughs> maybe maybe with the Valve Index with the finger tracking, just oh, use your no. fingers, you know, finger uh, painting. <laughs> that could maybe work. <laughs> that could maybe work. That's nice. <laughs> says. All right, uh, that was title two out of seven. So we're gonna go to title Whoa. three. Uh, three for a reason, right? So this one. Half -life Half -life. Alex. Yeah, thank you, Rowdy. Got it. He, he redeemed himself from several months ago when I tricked him. I was a horrible person. Horrible person. <laughs> um, right, so this one. Now, 
everyone knows about this, so I'll, I'll keep it really short. But uh, this is the story of an impossible fight against an, a vicious alien race known as the Combine. Set between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2, you play as Alex Vance and your humanity's only chance for survival. Now, why should you buy a game that's, you know, 40 quid, $50 right now uh, and get into this? Supported across PC VR platforms, it's by Valve and it's their return uh, to the Half-Life universe in VR. Uh, what I'm running the trailer for, by the way, is, uh, is, is, is one of the original Black Mesa videos. It is not Alex, because we've all seen the Alex trailer like 600 times. And there's a reason for that as well. I wanted to give you a little piece of history here, which I found really, really interesting. IGN, on the 26th of November in 1998, posted their review of Half-Life 1. And to me, it reads the same reason why you should be interested in and picking up Half-Life Alex. Here's, here's, here's their statement. They said, Carefully crafted for the single-player experience, every encounter in Half-Life is a new challenge. Nearly every room throws out something you haven't seen before. Every sound is a worrying cue that something horrible is about to happen. The sheer number of hand-scripted events and little scenes keeps the action moving, giving you a reason to keep playing. If only to see what could possibly happen next. I haven't had so much fun playing a game in years. I have not been frightened by a game in years. I have not dreaded corners like I have dreaded corners in this game in years. Half-Life is a superbly ambient game. It constantly presents you with variety, surprises, and new challenges to keep you hooked. It's a tour de force in game design. I think I remember that quote being on the cover of like PC Magazine or something. The definitive single-player game in a single first-person shooter. Don't cheat yourself. Play this game. And that really resounded with me as that's the reason I, I paid for Alex. So Yeah, I think that uh, applies a little bit for, for all of us. Yeah. Like we all know like the legacy that Half-Life put down and uh, we're all expecting this legacy kind of like to continue in Half-Life Alex. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I know we'll talk about it a bit later, but uh, some of the words that have come about it uh, <laughs> from uh, creators, people who've played it and stuff, are just really uh, echo echoing off of the chamber walls and getting us all hyped for it. We heard it at the beginning. Nathan said it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. good. Guys, guys, listen. Good. Guys, listen. This, this game, this game, okay, is the future of how pancake games are meant to be played, okay? If you played this... You don't want to go back to all the other stuff you played. You only want to look into what's next, what's going to be the next big thing. First glimpse of VR going mainstream. And from there, we'll see what happens. But it's yeah. exciting, very exciting. So what Zim said, yeah, totally reflects. It's like a throwback, a blast from the past, but it's also you talking about the future reviews of Have Live Alex. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's, that's why, like, I read it and I was like, this is so weird. It, it feels like this could be a review I see published, you know, in a couple of days' time. So that's landing March 23rd, as Mike said earlier. Preload it now. Yeah. It's open. It's only 64 Ooh. gigawatts. It's only, yeah. <laughs> to load on your your little system i've i've heard of so many people offloading things like asgard's wrath for this and good on you anyway yeah. um <sighs> next up this one i've been quite um excited for since we saw it teased paper beast coming to psvr uh, this is a playful exploration yeah. game very artful in a colorful ecosystem born out of big data undertake a virtual journey of discovery through an immersive and poetic gameplay experience Somewhere deep down in the vast memory of a data server, an ecosystem has emerged. Decades of lost code and forgotten algorithms await. So in this game, you get to explore this kind of expansive universe with these weird, like, paper-created creatures and go on a journey. Um, so you're, what you're basically saying is this is how my work laptop looks like on the inside. Exactly how your work laptop <laughs> wow. looks on the inside. Flowers, <laughs> There's a lot more seedy stuff, though. <laughs> a lot, dark, a, dark a lot more ones and zeros. Yeah. <laughs> um, as, I, as I've said before, I like highlighting uh, YouTuber comments or comments in various forms. YouTuber user named Q is legit uh, says, dude, I am going to get so high before I play this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's got good plans. Probably, probably best idea for this. Plan. Plan. Was, it, was it Nathy? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, the way he came. I in. do not endorse this this uh, quote. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one, Rhonda. What are we on now? Five. Uh, all right, number five. Number five on Zim's list is seven. The special seven. The magnificent seven. Uh, next up, the Room VR: A Dark Matter, a game that once you have seen, probably on a mobile phone or cell phone somewhere. Uh, the Room comes to VR. Quest, PSVR, and Rift by Fireproof Games landing on March 26th. This is the next chapter in a mysterious world of the Room series. It's a puzzle series. Really, really deep one. Uh, the game begins deep within the British Museum in London. Oh, London. Uh, where the disappearance of an esteemed Egyptologist, didn't know that was a thing, prompts a police investigation into the unknown. Explore cryptic locations and examine fantastic gadgets as you unravel the mystery of the room. This looks, Ooh. the assets in this, What for those who were watching video, astounding. Like, mm -hmm. really looks great. And to be able to play a game like that on Quest, you know, or PSVR, Rift, my God, that's awesome. I can't, I can't wait. It does look like the kind of game that I would get incredibly frustrated in because I have like no patience for this kind of stuff whatsoever. It's a puzzle game. It's a, it's a puzzle game for sure. Yeah. Hardcore like, puzzle game. Did Hardcore. you guys not play this one at OC6? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Didn't OC6? get a chance. Uh, yeah, they were showing it at OC6. They were, they should, they had this like cordoned off uh, area yeah, for it. Like very yeah, I, I played it on Quest, um, and it it was like really nice. It was like a really cool, solid uh, puzzle game. So if you love so puzzle games, then this is a, a must buy in my opinion. Yeah. Plus, the setting was in like Victorian London, which was totally my jam in a police station. So I was like, <laughs> living the dream, you know. So it's my it's office. Good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mike's like, Mike's like, I got this. I got, I got this. this. I, I've been got here before, guys. you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. So let's go to uh, game title number six. Another mysterious hit from Twisted Pixel. Uh, mm. The guys who dropped on us very recently, Path of the Warrior, and some of you will know from Wilson's Heart. This is an original first-person action adventure that first landed more than a year ago on Oculus Go. And mm -hmm. obviously was 3DOF at the time. Is being given the touch of 6DOF, the 6 degree of, degrees of freedom that allows you to move about and shake your booty. Uh, I don't know if the game actually includes booty shaking. Uh, but it's got a, a series of kind of unlockables as you go through this kind of colorful uh, first-person shooter game. It's got some characters listed in the trailer. I don't know if you've got playable characters in it or how that goes. Have any of you guys played the Go game? Because I haven't. No. It just looks no. very A-team. First time I hear of it, actually. Yeah, it looks very, very A-team. It looks weird. It looks <laughs> weird, but it looks like it might have some goodness to it. And that's the thing. Like, seeing as we just saw Path of the Warrior... You know, you guys really liked. I mean, mm. hugging an alien running down Fifth Street it looks mm. looks like could be lots of fun. So this has enough pizzazz and kind of oddness to it that it really entices me uh, to want to go and play it. The B team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bit mad. Um, nice. So that was that was title six. On to title seven. As Mike said, this is like a crazy run. When was the last time that we had this many? Titles in a go. And uh, good ones as well. And good, good ones. Yeah, that, 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 ones. I mean, I, I was going to edit it down to seven, but then, or down to three, and I was like, I can't. I just can't because there's so much here that's good. Um, I believe we talked about this actually not too long ago. Down the Rabbit Hole on Quest, PSVR, and Rift by Cortopia. March 26th, this is dropping a relaxing adventure puzzle game. Reminded me of, um, uh, of, of, of Lucky's Tale a little bit, mm. where you're like looking at a scene... Um, and guiding a character through Wonderland. And this is basically you're, you're, you're guiding through a scene that is set prior to Alice's arrival in Wonderland because we know she fecked the place up. Uh, <laughs> and in the game, you discover another girl who's in search of her lost pet, Patches, uh, that has wandered into Wonderland. So you guide her as she moves through the mysterious world looking for her pet. But which way will you go? Looks like a you quite know what this reminds tale. me a little bit of, like the, the gameplay What's of that? like uh, the Curse of Monkey Island. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Very much like the Curse of Monkey Island. Like a, um, oh, what's that genre of game called? Point and click. Point and click yeah. adventures, which frankly, my, my kids just explored. And um, there's a game called Un Unforced Scene Incidents, which is very wonderfully timed with the current pandemic situation. If you want a, a point and click adventure that's really quite good, Try unforeseen incidents. I played it oh, a like, couple like, years ago. It's actually funny. Like uh, there was a point and click game that got me into neuroscience. 
Did it? Eventually. What? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. not a joke. It's called the uh, gray matter. Mm. Oh, oh. Yeah. Huh. You've mentioned yeah. this before. It on got the show, me. Think, that, yeah. That's the, the original game that got me interested in, in neuroscience and that's drove awesome. me into that direction. That's really yeah, interesting. That's, that's awesome. The, the, the impact, we, we should do this at some point, like trace back our roots of like what led us to here game wise, because I mm -hmm. think that's quite interesting. But yeah. those are my seven. Quick recap in case you wanted the titles again Industrial Petting, Color Space, Half Life Alex, in case you forget that one. Paper Beast, <laughs> The Room VR, A Dark Matter, B Team, and Down the Rabbit Hole. I'll That's... also quickly mention that Down the Rabbit Hole is very cool. We got to play at Gamescom. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. And that is a casual one, by yeah, the way. So... That one is pretty easy to play. It's very relaxed. Very but relaxed. it's got platforming elements to it as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, what I love about that game is the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, you can look up to see where you started. Oh, cool. uh, and it's still there. You know, yeah. it, it's very smart. Design. You can see that uh, this week Zim is doing the races again because uh, no dinosaurs. Shame on you. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, Rowdy? <laughs> Mike's here. Anyway, Rowdy, oh, Rowdy's, oh, Rowdy's oh, a little oh, jelly that he wasn't in charge. This, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just getting jelly. Um, yeah, nice. Awesome releases this week. Uh, let's get into some main topics then. And the first main topic this week is a surprising one, uh, which I didn't think we'd be talking about this early, to be honest, but it is uh, a leak about an upcoming new headset from Oculus, uh, codenamed Del Mar. So the codename uh, follows previous headset codenames, such as Crystal Cove, Monterey Bay, Santa Cruz, uh, which just like Del Mar are all coastal locations in California. Um, so kind of following the trend there, um, the details around this headset uh, were found on the Oculus developers dashboard, and then they were posted on Reddit by a username Ray Bops. Um, the post basically was a screenshot which showed um, Oculus Del Mar development uh, above, uh, no, sorry, below Oculus Quest development. So you had like the Oculus Quest development, then you had Oculus Del Mar development underneath it, and it had this kind of like a uh, bit of wording underneath it which read. The information contained on this page is restricted to early Del Mar developers only. Do not share this information. Any questions should be directed to the Del Mar First Access Forum or your Oculus partner. Whoops. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. somehow, they, they, I don't know what happened, but this information is out there. Um, and alongside this Del Mar headset, they also reference to a controller, uh, which is codenamed Jedi. So we don't have any firm details, of course. Uh, Oculus haven't confirmed uh, the leak, um, but it seems like we're going to get a new headset yeah. and a new controller uh, coming yeah. relatively soon yeah. uh, if people are developing yeah. for it already. Um, so I wanted to know, th sort of throw it out there to the chat and you guys as well as to what you think this might be. Uh, do you think it's going to be an Oculus Go successor? Do you think it's going to be like a, uh, an Oculus Quest Pro, maybe a Rift 2, or maybe even the AR headset that they've been teasing yeah. about, uh, OC6. I'd like to know what you guys. Uh, so, think. so what you just said—that's all we know. Because I've seen, I've seen articles on this, I've seen videos on it. People claiming that it's standalone, that it's a uh, successor to. So that's all fake news. It's all just clicky, <laughs> click, click. Are, it's, yeah, all it's all speculation. It's all speculation. So we did, on, like, no one yeah. knows. No one knows. Okay. Uh, also, it sounds a bit like a like a deliberate leak. I'm going to talk no. more about that shortly because yeah. there's money there, and I'll tell you why. Uh, but what do you guys think this might be then in terms of headset? As you said, like if they're already developing for it now, mm -hmm. like the thing is, the Quest is still pretty good to have around, so I don't think it's dead. Oculus Go, like we, we spoke about 3 Doff, it's kind of on the... Another six DOF headset that is maybe downgraded compared to the Quest. I don't know if that's something maybe interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, AR, and we haven't talked about that for for ages. Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but if if it has a code name, it needs to it needs to be something new. It can't be like just like uh, it's now just how they're going to merge Rift S and Quest together, yeah. just with like a cable. <laughs> it needs to be something. That is no, next, right? No, 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 because they've, so? they've, they've been using this for the entire yeah, life cycle of their product. But eventually they run single... out of coastal cities, so what are they going to do <laughs> <then>? <laughs> Well, they, they've already gone down to San Andreas or whatever this is. Um, like, San Diego, I think, is where, where, uh, where, where Del Mar is. But it's like, uh, my, my thought is, oh, I only have two thoughts on this. One is, it's what I've said before, and I'm, I'm still thinking we're going to see an, another iteration of the quest following in Apple's footsteps, iterate your products every year. Um, and then the second one, which just leads me back to the other uh, milestone that we've got is when they said, we're working on an AR headset. But I, I feel like it's 
probably too early for them to have teams focused around AR. So I'm going to go with essentially Quest 2, especially because no, there's a controller it change. Be, it needs to be AR because the last two letters of Del Mar. Are like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and ah. I, th I think my, my personal opinion on this is the same. Like, uh, I do think it's too early for AR as well. Um, mm. I do think they're working on it, but I think it's too early for them to release a, a headset. Um, but I personally think it might be a Rift 2.0. Um, because if you think about it, I think the Quest is solid as it is. I think you know it's selling very well. I don't think they want to confuse the market with Quest yeah. any more than it currently no. is. But the Rift S is kind of like people <laughs> like it. It was a minor upgrade. It's a stopgap. It's a stopgap headset. And I think this might be the true Rift oh. 2.0 that we actually wanted. So competitor to, to, competitor to index essentially then like go competitor toe to, to toe. index. Yeah, yeah. In, you Smart. hit the nail on the head Boom. there Be because if you think about it. You know, Oculus have got a couple of markets covered at the moment. They've got the Quest with standalone. They've got Rift S with low-end PC accessibility. Yeah. Now it's ready for them to go, right, let's go full balls to the wall. Let's yeah. release a crazy high-end. But, but, like, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, right? I'm not saying I disagree with that. But at the same time, like, it would kind of defeat, like, the strategy that they've been having for, like, the yeah. past while. Like they've always wanted to bring the price down for VR. There, it's not like the, the like I would say the Oculus Rift S is a is a lesser headset than the, than the than the Index. What they're actually doing is they're selling a headset maybe half the price of what it actually would be. But so this is my I, point. I'm, so I'm, I'm exactly not entirely what, convinced that that. No, that's like, exactly what they do. They make a high end headset yeah. and sell it for a cheap. Exactly. Price, cheap so what, price. what if they can out trump Index uh, specs? But, but that, that's what I'm wondering. Like is under seven hundred bucks? Is there enough like technology advancements in order to you know go all out with that? Is that is that are we are we at that point? Are we ready with like bringing out something like very focal lenses or like or, or what is what what is the risk to point? Have very, What's the unique selling point of it, right? Like what yeah. are they going to come out punching with? Because just, yeah. just like pushing a higher resolution or even a, like a higher field of view, is that going to be enough to be well, pushing that price point? A unique selling point would be that it's wireless. Mm. I think. But you, you, you're right, actually, touching on the very focal thing, because they te teased that a long time ago. That would be a really unique selling point. Because but I don't think could... that's ready at this point. And Possibly who would care? Not. Like, well, I mean, performance -wise, we don't know when, care, of right? course, Del Mar mm. would come out then. But like, why, um, would, why, why, would it, why would your average consumer care about Verifocal? Just, just, yeah. just because they're able to push better looking games. On the it's hard to sell. But, but say for with Half-Life Alex, for example, if you looked at Alex's glove and it's close to your, your face and you can see all the detail and then you move it away and then the very focal moves to the background, that that is a real key selling point. And, and maybe, sell, maybe as well, like, I, I mean, I'm not completely up to date with like the, uh, the, uh, the technology of that, but maybe it might also reduce the requirements from a, from a, a PC. Could, could well be with like especially with dynamic foveated rendering, which you've talked about on the show before. What, what um, is saying eye tracking? And I, again, you know, with the branding, with the moves that they've already gone, you got to think Facebook's going to want for more data acquisition. And we've saw it in their presentations at OC6, like eye tracking, it has to be in their next headset. It really and does. Also, if you think about it, like say if they could push this really high end headset, utilize eye tracking for performance saving, and it runs on the same hardware as the Rift S. That would be pretty incredible. Mm. Um, so, you know, this is all speculation, of course. This is just us getting excited about new hardware. Um, but the thing is as well, like you touched on this earlier and around sort of this seems like intentional. And I think it's an intentional leak as well. Yeah. I don't know why I think that. I just have this like gut feeling. And it's around the timing because I don't yeah. know if you guys remember we were at PAX in Boston, and there was this big Oculus event at PAX, and they were showing off the Quest, they were showing off the Rift S, they had all these first-party games, which were amazing, and then in the middle of that, Valve <laughs> dropped the details of the Index, and it was like, the timing couldn't have been perfect. Like, Valve did it intentionally, well, of course. Plus, not only that they were, like, specifically hunting for, for Facebook with the fact that they had an IPD adjuster and exactly. just kind of trolling them with that, showing, exactly. like, hey, we have a better thing going on right and, now. And if you look at, like, the releases this week, you know, this week we've discussed they're all releasing at the end of next week which is you know probably when everyone's finishing up <laughs> all, all the guns are out yeah you know so they like <laughs> so they're, they're smart with the timing but also if you think about it with all the hype around alex and all the articles that are going to be written about alex if some people are then tagging on the end of these articles oh by the way oculus have you know leaked that they're, they're working yeah, on yeah, headset yeah. as well it's in like the future 
it, it, it drums up the hype yeah. for them to ride yeah, on the coattails right. of, of Alex. And, so, but 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 more about like the, the names itself, like because uh, I mean I, I don't think that anything is like hidden in like Del Mar, but. Jedi is a very specific kind of name for a, for a controller, and that can mean okay. two things. It's either like like a want, right? Like a want, but I don't think that as a strategy of what no. we're going for, or it would be like hand control. I think it's hand controls. It's the midichlorian thing. I I, I guarantee that's it. No, no, I, like that's it. Like when you're thinking about it, what does it bring out? It brings out the whole kind of like let me do the magic side, you know, of, of the whole force. That's that's where mm. the Jedi. It is not that. Lenovo goddamn headset that was selling for hundred several hundred yeah, dollars right. that does one thing. No, not and to that. kind of loop us back full circle. I think maybe this is why we haven't heard any releases like of new titles or like you know talked about hand tracking on a PC platform because yeah, maybe because they're saving all this. They want to release it on the to sell it. But yeah, like, no. it needs to be a physical controller. Then it's not like some kind of AR. Oh yeah, no, I think it will have physical controllers and hand tracking. Yeah, yeah. If it's mentioning, but, but, if it's mentioning but, the controller, it will be. Yeah. Yeah, because they're mentioning the controller. I, I would expect more like a like a glove type of thing with some kind of feedback, right? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. It's, a, it's, it's kind of crazy. If, if if that's really the thing, it's crazy to think about that. Like Oculus has been or Facebook has been making. You know, so many, so many awesome games for the last uh, three years with other developers, and then Valve just drops one title, and the whole uh, place needs to some something needs to get out because the game. So it's it's crazy to see what the reaction to this is. Even get going so far as like pulling a a headset out of your you know magic hat. But the if thing that's is really that, the thing, if that's been, really the thing, they've been working on these headsets for years, years behind the scenes. And yeah, it's but just you can also release it another time. You could also yeah, leak but it the timing time. is good for them, I think, to do. I, I think like there's this. there's nothing else than a headset that could beat next week's release. I think in terms of news. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't no, know. And, it's and hard. Oculus is gonna. I mean, I, I don't think it's Oculus' intention to like block the way from like happening because if there's one company that would benefit from. Half of Alex doing no. well, I think it will be Oculus as well. Oh, no, that's what Mike said. Ride the tail. Yeah, I think they're riding the tails. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think you know, my my guess is that we'll hear more about this um, at the next Oculus Connect. Hopefully, that will be a physical event, and the whole you know uh, go, thing going on with the world right now will die down, yeah. and we can actually you know go to an event again. Because yeah. I think that would be a real shame. I'd be really disappointed to yeah. miss Oculus Connect. Someone someone said like it 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 might have already been showing up behind closed doors from last year. You know. It's the same with the quest. It has yeah. been around for very long. We just have never seen it in the public eye. What about yeah. the, uh, the the dome? They had a, a dome headset as well. The half, right? dome. half dome. Yeah, that was the yeah. very focal one. That was the very focal yeah. Uh, yeah. headset. Oh my god! Um, They're only yeah, all excited here. One. Who said gloves? Who said gloves? I said gloves. Yeah, I, said gloves. Rowdy, I can't think of anything else. You know how much I'm there sitting with my bike glove all the time. <laughs> like I just love to have something like that. It'd be amazing. Anyway. Yeah, so that is um, you know some some leaked information about an upcoming Oculus headset called uh, codenamed Del Mar. We don't know what it is, but you know speculation out there. Love to know your thoughts in the chat and everything as well. There's a great uh, chat comment. Uh, sorry, I got to kick this in. Sure. Oliver D says foot tracking. That yeah, would, that would be a really interesting transformation. Foot to tracking. <laughs> foot tracking. Or, or if you if you speak to Eric Hartley, who's in the chat, he's got some <laughs> ideas about what he would like to be tracked. You know, we <laughs> Uh, By the way, uh, back last year, so the timing is good. True. That is true. That's yeah. still coming too. I don't know. Maybe that's a. It deal. will. It will. It's never. Have like Alex, uh, but uh, um, you know, if you still have a, a, a leap motion and you uh, uh, put your, you know, your foot up in the air, um, it tracks fine. I tried it. I gave people handshakes in alt space <laughs> with my feet. feet. Yeah. Like a There's a video on, on YouTube of that too, but it works. So if you want to try like some, you know, before it actually comes to consumers, that's it. There you go. So that's um, the Oculus news. Now, our final topic of the show this week is about an interview with Gabe Newell uh, that he did with IGN. And it's, it's really rare to see an interview with Gabe Newell. So when this happens, it's like a big deal, right? Uh, and it just made watching uh, the interview even more interesting. It's like watching, it's like seeing a unicorn for the first time. You know what I mean? It's just like a magical moment. No, no, no. It's a, a balloonicorn. A balloonicorn. That's true. Very true. Um, <laughs> So the interview was supposed to be about Half-Life Alex, but it really just tended to be about Gabe and his thoughts on industry and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I um, think that's also because he's the kind of guy who can like divert like a conversation to the direction that he wants it to go. 
yeah because nobody will try to like you know get him off the topic that he's yeah. talking about right <laughs> yeah. i think i think no one minds though yeah no it's exactly. great don't mind. Don't it's, mind. It's like, it's like, i would rare. also like i would also like to interview gabe newell for for half life but then in the end end up with a total different story about what he thinks is interesting yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's and nice I, and and you know he obviously mentioned uh alex said that he was incredibly proud of the work you know that, that the team has achieved with alex and that he thinks it's some of the best work they've ever done which is, you know, I'm sure is going to live up to the hype. Um, but we're not going to be talking about Alex. We're going to be talking about some of the other comments that he made. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have sort of transcribed bits of the interview and I'll just kind of like read them out. So this is Gabe uh, when being asked what stuff he's kind of working on other than like just emails, day-to-day -day office stuff at Valve and Half-Life Alex. And he says, uh, personally, the area I'm spending a lot of time on has been growing out of a bunch of research that occurred a while ago in brain-computer interfaces. And I think that's kind of long lead stuff. That's kind of uh, the background thread that I get pulled back into when other things aren't demanding my attention. So he's talking about brain computer interfaces and how uh, this can integrate uh, with VR and, and potentially, you know, other uh, platforms for the future of like entertainment and gaming. Um, so he continues to say, uh, in the brain computer stuff, we're way closer to the Matrix than people realize. It's not going to be the Matrix. It's a movie that misses all the interesting technical sub su subtleties and just how weird the post-brain computer interface world is going to be. It's going to have a huge impact on the kinds of experiences that we can create for people. I think connecting to people's motor cortex and visual cortex is going to be way easier than people expected. And doing things like reading and writing to someone's motor cortex is way more of a practical problem than making people feel cold, for example. And you would never have guessed that. And I would never have guessed that before going into it. It turns out that your brain is has really good interface. It turns out your brain has really good interfaces for some things and really badly designed kludgy interfaces for other things. The fact that your immune system gets involved in your perception of temperature means all all sorts of weird parts of your brains that uh, participate in the sensation of being cold, whereas your motor cortex or your visual cortex are much more practical problems. And then he sort of rounds it up by saying, it's an extinction level event for en every entertainment form that's not thinking about brain computer interfaces. If you're in the entertainment business and you're not thinking about this, you're definitely going to be thinking about it a lot more in the future. Which is pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. he, he he had some like some of the stuff he comes out with. This is the thing that these guys, they just they're just like behemoths of the industry, right? And they they come out laying down these statements that, thankfully for Mike for quoting and 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 putting it so eloquently, like it's amazing to see that just roll off his tongue, so to speak. But the thing that caught me, he he made a comment about when they asked him what his favorite game was, and uh, he made this lovely comment about. Um, how it, you know seeing closed projects so like Half Life One, Half Life Two, I think he said the Portal Two was his favorite game. Like how how painful it was to kind of see the first two. Like those couldn't be his favorites because all he saw was this like package of flaws, mm -hmm. and that just really resonated with me. But this this like brain computer interface thing, hearing Musk and others talk about it and getting into that level of depth. Can you imagine like VR coupled with that technology? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of some someone just said in chat, I don't want my arms controlled in in VR, but like anything in in, in that, anything in that is going to feel so um, it, like intravenous almost, like like yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be inside you to some it's extent. It's going to be invasive, and invasive very invasive. Yeah. That's the word because I was looking for. And, and the way you think about it, like traditional VR nowadays, it will be like that, but you won't need to wear a headset because it will be jacked straight into your brain, pretty much just like the Matrix. You know, you won't have to wear a physical headset. You'll just be in it, uh, which is kind so of like, crazy I'm, to like, think I mean, about. I, I'm a little bit more worried about like the health concerns still with that kind of technology because, I mean, I, I have a little bit of experience with, with BCIs, with brain computer interfaces, but mostly... Um, like the ones that I don't have a problem with is trying to read the data out. Like there's been like Google has been working on that as well, trying to like get information from mm -hmm. the visual cortex, denoise that, and then try to portray the image that has been perceived by the virtual cortex um, with the visual cortex. But what I have a far more bigger problem with is that uh, the brain is, is, although we really like separate it into regions, it's, it mostly consists out of networks. So by triggering a certain network, there's a plethora of regions that you can actually activate. And what, what we did a lot, like you have a lot of technologies that, that 
use that specifically for psychological disorders, like for example, depression or Parkinson's. We use BCIs in order that to stimulate a specific part of a, a specific region. We can do that by implanting electrodes in the brain, which is very invasive, of course, but you also have non-invasive methods like a really big net magnets that are being placed on your head in order to stimulate a certain region. But that's all like that technology exists already for a long time, but nobody really knows how that works. And there are like serious, you know, health concerns with that as well in a positive way and in a negative way, yeah. uh, because what you're basically doing is you like you, your brain is very plastic, like you can modify uh, certain signals with that. So I do wonder by these kind of technologies hitting like the consumer field, which has already been done for quite a while, because if you look into direct current stimulation, whereby people actually place electrodes on their brain and do a direct current through their brain, um, that's being done quite regularly. And people claim that they can concentrate better after doing that. So yeah. it's, a, it's a very interesting topic, but it's like a lot of research is necessary in order to like develop mm. like some proper strategies. Yeah. What, what I love is that, you know, like at the moment we're obsessed with resolutions and pixels, whereas in the future we're going to be obsessed with how many electrodes you have in, implanted in your brain, you know, and how immerse, more immersed you're going to be with those extra electrodes and, and what paths they have access to. And, you know, uh, mm. that's going to be the, the interesting argument in the future, you know, I think. And, and also another thing is like the, the, the regions he's describing, the visual cortex and the motor cortex, they're the ones that are laying directly under the, the, the top layer of the skull, basically. Mm. But you have a lot of like uh, other regions like the amygdala and uh, the like other uh, non-cortical regions, the thalamus, for example, that have a very strong relationship with emotions and fear and anxiety, but they're way, way deeper. And it's much harder to reach those kind of structures without getting invasive. Um, yeah, and I think that's where, where it sort of links back to like uh, Elon Musk with like Neuralink. You know, they're, they're trying to make it very, although it is invasive, but trying to minimize the, the trauma involved in having these electrodes placed but, in your head. But the electrodes in your head, like if you have deep brain stimulation, the amount of trauma that you get is actually very, very minimal. But mm. of course, you will still have to go through other regions in order to reach those regions. The skull, so, yeah. Minimal trauma, yeah. I love that term. I just, there minimal should be a trauma. podcast called Minimal Trauma, you know? That, that could have been an alternate. Why did we call the show that? We could have but the problem with, with the brain is that like, like minimal trauma is often not that big of a problem because you have your brain is plastic you know it can it can modify its way around that you probably need some training and some revalidation in order to get that mm -hmm. but at the same time it's never an ideal scenario so i can't see something like that being used for a consumer even if there's minimal trauma the amount of risk that goes associated with that is just enormous yeah but of when course they're, they're working with different kind of fibers and very optimal i don't know anything about that of course i only know about the electric. I, I love it it's like how are you playing half-life alex you're playing on your rift s you're playing on your Vin valve index no it's just playing going straight brain. into my brain bro <laughs> just getting Brit. jacked in bro i have no gpu bro i yeah. have no intel core potato it's my brain that i'm using but, I am but a isn't, GPU. That gonna, isn't that gonna suck when it's not your CPU that's holding you back. It's your own brain. And you're <laughs> like, oh, no, neck. mom. Come on, oh, mom, dad. I knew I should have paid attention in school. This is why. Damn it. <laughs> Only an i3? Yeah. Really? Oh. Genius. But yeah, nevertheless, obviously, it's probably a long, long time away. But I think it's exciting, nevertheless. And to, to see someone very, like him, very. legend status, talk about this kind of stuff makes talking, me very excited. Talking so. to us mortals. Yeah, it was, a, it was a very fun interview. So I'd definitely go and uh, urge you to go and check it out. Uh, it's on IGN's uh, YouTube channel. So go uh, go check it out. Really, really interesting. Um, so let's round up the show then, maybe with some questions from the chat. I'll sort of um, uh, reiterate the show times and everything else. Also, for some reason this week, I don't know why, uh, when you search for F-Reality, the show doesn't show up in the search results. So if you're enjoying the show, please make sure you like it and, and, and share it with uh, with everyone else to get the word out there. But I think there's something weird's going on with YouTube's algorithms where YouTube is drunk. everyone's at home from YouTube. If, if Mike mentions the liking part before I can even talk about it. You know something's wrong. Something. Yeah, That's something's gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, so just a reminder, this is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and on Twitch. You can also catch the show live in VR using big screen TV. Uh, really, really cool way to watch the show. Uh, the show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, 12 midday in Central US. Also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. Okay.
Well, right. I hope YouTube is not going to have issues when Half Life comes out. It will kind of kill its momentum for that day. Well, it would kill my momentum, for sure. And I think it would kill, kill my uh, incentive to finish the game in a single stream, but we shall see. There is yeah. a, there's an interesting thing. VR365 says, uh, won't people die if stuff gets that real? I do think, like, like you know, scaring a goat to death, if you just shock them, right? They just die. Like, literally, heart attacks will become, uh, as, a, as, a, as a fear connoisseur, I would say that, I do believe in that. I believe that mm -hmm. you could scare someone to death um, if they were immersed enough and put into a situation that was that traumatic. Similarly, I'm sure Rowdy would chip in, chip in and probably say, you can literally give someone PTSD. Like, they're standing yeah. on that battlefield. They think they're on that battlefield. Gunshots are going off. Yeah. They're scared for their all, life. All you need to do is watch Black Mirror and you'll know that this is going to happen true. in the future. Yeah, that is true. But at the same time, it can be used for positive things as well, like treating PTSD and, uh, and other illnesses. Sorry, you said positive things. I immediately just thought pigs and I'm Black Mirror. I just can't get that <laughs> out of my head. I thought and, your brain was going to go somewhere else there. And, go and, on, go and, on. Tell me, Mike. Tell me. Uh, <laughs> And then we it's go monetized. back to, you know, if you want to, you know, uh, uh, grow some space uh, pigs, then you can play that one game that Zim mentioned. So here we yeah. go. Everything comes full circle. Full circle. <laughs> That's another. Yeah. Uh, uh, any interesting Kickstarter projects? I've actually seen a few, but nothing I can remember. The ones that um, that were interested, uh, interesting, like the uh, the smell one has kind of been put on hold. The Childex has also been put on hold because of the global pandemic. They can't source the parts because they're obviously all come from China. Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend backing any Kickstarter projects right now in terms of the VR space because they're yeah. all just going to be massively delayed. Uh, I, would, I would support your locals at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Local businesses. Yeah. I was going to say place. local Kickstarters. What? <laughs> local Kickstarters. Yeah, <laughs> if I go up to like the farmer's market, <laughs> it's yeah, like sure. potatoes, cheese, <laughs> yeah. Kickstarter campaign. Kickstart potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff yeah. said, uh, Rowdy, I enjoyed hearing you talk about that and Parkinson's in previous shows. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. He's the big brain on the show. The big brain. <laughs> Oh man. Um, hit, hit the like if you like Mike's new camera angle. Exactly. I spent so much time this week readjusting my setup. So I had a I had a bad back where I was, so I had to shift everything around. And I thought whilst I was doing it, I'll upgrade. So I'm actually using a DSLR now uh, for my webcam, which is super OP, but it looks really nice. So uh, uh, I appreciate you the, guys uh, noticing the effort. Mike, you got to you gotta show us a zoom in and out because that action is super the, smooth. Like. Yeah, so, so this is like a, a zoom out. So you can see my space. You can see all the mess in the background there, which I generally hide away. Wait, wait, wait. Is that is that a dusty old uh, vibe uh, Cosmos right there? <laughs> no, I, I've got oh. some boxes for like the, oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. the, uh, the Rift S and the Quest uh, okay. behind me. I've wait, also wait, is that a headcut? Nice, I've got some really nice... Um, neon poles that i've just got delivered today actually they look super super nice I've got a red and a blue one to nice. go like beat saber vibes so uh that's going to be super nice mm -hmm. to play around with those uh but yeah like it's, it's cool to have a dslr and and play around with that it looks looks really but, really nice yeah for anyone who's wondering like why does mike look a little bit different this week he's actually been horizontally flipped so it, you're looking at the other side of mike's face that you usually do although because he's on the other side of his room it looks like he didn't move that much it right. looks totally different. So, yeah, yeah that's a funny thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Very um, confusing. Yeah. People oh, are uh, asking what the countdown is. It's just, the, it's just the time. It's just the time. The real life time. So, uh, what, I was what thinking to, to, people are going to ask about to that sync sure. up. Um, but yeah, like next week, um, we're going to be talking about uh, how uh, the global pandemic has affected the VR industry and how it could hinder and also accelerate its use uh, so that's going to be an interesting conversation we have next week of course we're going to be talking about uh, our impressions of half-life alex we'll avoid as many spoilers as we can but we're just going to talk about the core gameplay what we think um, and, and how it ends we're going to highlight that yeah, entirely. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you exactly what happens at the end. No, we won't do that, I promise. Um, so, yeah, we're going to wrap up the show now. Um, stay safe, of course, with everything going on in the world right now. It's important to stay safe. Look after yeah. your loved ones, friends and family. Wash your hands. Don't panic by. And, uh, yeah, just be careful. Look after each other. Uh, have a great week in VR. Enjoy Half-Life, Alex. We'll be back next week at the usual time. So, until then, take care and bye-bye for now. See bye -bye. you later. Bye-bye.